Hello, everybody. Hi. You might recognize us. You might not. And you might also recognize the studio here. You probably know we're the Holy Smokes people. So here we are. Holy Smokes? Well, hang on. Oh, my goodness. Where do we find Holy Smokes? Um, the men with coats. I know, that's completely, night. that's completely aside. We should just get through it. But no, what are say? Cause he's just trying to destroy my clever intro, which is that it's Valentine's Day and our date stood us up. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I just wanted to say that so much. We had a special guest lined up to interview for your viewing pleasure. Uh -huh. And it did not work out, probably because it's Valentine's Day. Yeah, I imagine uh, they got home and they were like, hey, at 8 30, I got something to do. And the other one said, no, you don't. No, you don't. I am lucky, though, because I have uh, I have to be on call tonight. I guess that's not lucky. But what I'm lucky about we is that I have to any old day to do Valentine's Day. And I think if you tune in on Thursday to Holy Smokes in Real Men Were Killed, You'll find us talking a little about, how did you word it? Manufactured holidays. Manufactured holidays. I mean, they're there, and I love them. Most of us love them, but we think they're traditional in their lives. And, I mean... Kind of like I found out yesterday. I was yesterday years old. When I found out that the lyrics to Scotland the Brave were added in 1951. I thought this thing was like 200 years old. It was written in 1951. Well, Doesn't that blow your freaking mind? Amazing Grace wasn't even put to music until like, I don't even remember when. 60s something? Yeah. And then it was on, put to music, but not the music we know now. Right. And then on top of that, it wasn't put to bagpipes until 70? But because we are Gen X slash beginning millennial, it has been the thing you hear at all the funerals for our entire life. Mm -hmm. So we thought it had been that way for our parents and grandparents. And finding out that, you know, when my grandpa Gallagher was a baby fireman in the late 40s, after he got home from World War II like everybody else, if he had a colleague who died heroically, mm -hmm. whatever they piped, it was an amazing place. It may not even be Hector the Hero, but I can think of a lot of laments. Point is, I had assumed until very recently that that song was much, much older. Well, so in in the interim, or as uh, as because we're here anyway. Because we're here anyway. Uh, first of all, let's let's get uh, let's get some work done, right? Mm -hmm. Solange. Solange. To all the lovers out there. You. Uh, do us a favor and click down there on that subscribe. So you don't miss anything. Subscribe and you know, get everything. Uh, we're about to like post like a bunch of shows and they're going to be good. I, I think they're good. I hope you like them too. We're yes, having music while we talk. I hope it's not too powerful. And I'm just jacking around with my shirt. It's crooked and it me insane. I quite like when you jack around <laughs> with your shirt. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> I prefer it, actually. But anyway, I thought, you know, um, the first episode was me and Damien kind of, kind of um, interviewing each other. But there are other people in this company. There we go. So Me and Amy are the other two and you have, officers of this company. Yeah, no, you've got stonk, Stokes, yes. as the young ones would say. we got Stokes. We've got Stokes. Just as many as they got. Yeah, they do. They have equal partnership in this company, and they can vote. They just often don't. Right, but they're the handsome faces of this company because they're a kilt company. I'm the bearded face of this company. Well, I guess Damien has a beard too, so. You can see more of his face than your face. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay, so anyway, I thought, why don't we interview you? Would you like that? Could you stand that? Okay. Well, we have some questions that we're dying to hear. At least I do. I would love to know what he thinks he's done right now. Well, I mean, it's only been six years. I mean, it's only been six years. And I think I know, but they want to know. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't make up these questions. So, Sarah. Pardon me, before I drop my whiskey. Yes. 
every Damien and I have talked about the mission of this company is to empower others. We love tradition. We love uh, we love all things imaginative, and we want to do amazing things with this company. And I honestly want to tell you all that the least of those things is selling you a bill. I mean, that, that's you want to sell you a coat if you want a coat, but we want you to have the coat more than we want to be the ones to sell you. Yeah. So if we if we can't be the ones to sell it to you, we want to get someone to you that can. You need something tomorrow, and maybe you want the right people. But if you need the right thing, or if you want to help, um, let's say something more along the lines of consulting, we are the right people for that. And so we know. Lots of the people within work. the industry that make the coats and the coat things and the coat accessories. Yeah. So to that end. Okay. Um, did you ever think you would be involved in a coat company? I really didn't. You know the primary reason for that? Uh, tell me. My favorite is Irish. <laughs> so a, lot you, a lot of you ask. <laughs> what, one of the first things people ask when I'm wearing a coat is, are you Irish? And I'm like, I hardly, but I'm Scottish as well, so... That's always fun too. But no, I have, so far as I know, no Scottish ancestry. Unless you go really, really, really far. Because I've got Oyster Scots, of Ooh. course. Oysters, huh? Hmm. If you, don't know if you ask the Northern Irish, they will tell you they're Irish. Yeah. <laughs> so. But, you know, you can probably get from Ireland to Scotland on the very north tip by a John boat. Which is why there's a lot of intermixing up there. However, I digress, which is something we do a lot. I go with slaves. And we drink every time we digress, which is a lot. So tell me, do you like being part of the company? Of course, it's exciting. It's fun to empower people, and it's fun to get the word out, and it's fun to have a reason to go to all the festivals. Absolutely. We go to a lot of festivals. Um, if, so you know, we've, we've talked about C.E. Kilt's passion is to empower others. And whether that's through tradition or just through support. <coughs> um, tell me about your passion. And I can think of a bunch. Not to put you on the spot, though. I can see that look in her eyes. You are here to put me on the spot. A little bit, but I'm not here to gotcha. That's fair. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your passion, because I think I know what it is. But I want to hear you talk about it. Actually, it doesn't matter what I'm teaching people. I've taught English, I've taught GED, I've taught GRE, I've taught SAT, I've taught history. GED was fun because I got to teach everything from algebra to zoology. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. But I love watching that process happen in people's minds when suddenly they get it. The one half is two thirds. Oh, is that what you're talking about? Fractions and decimals are the same thing. <laughs> That's what you love, huh? You love. I love watching minds open like little flowers. It is my favorite thing, and that is true whether they are four or ninety. So, are you trying to, in a roundabout way, say that you like to empower people? Well, of course, nothing empowers people more than knowledge and skills and intuition and experience and growing. You should see her. She and I get to teach children at church. They're seven and eight of us. <laughs> and when they catch, when they get what we're trying to talk about, man, it is awesome. Especially if it's like the next week and we're reviewing, then we don't think that they've been listening to anything. And they remember everything. And yeah, they answer the questions. It blows our minds. They're like, woo, 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 woo. And you're like, so hey, why did Joshua pick the guys who drink weird like dogs? And they're like, because that way you know it was God and not him. And listen to me. That's me. That's not the point that matters. The point is they listened and they understood and they have assimilated that knowledge. Well, um, and, and so, I, okay, I know I'm coming up with lots of questions. That's a book. So, so. It's not a open book, it's just a weird book. It's a great book. Sometimes it's in odd languages, though. 
as, as which reminds me that my goal for this year is to start learning Gaelic. I haven't started. I need to get the that's her, that was a Christmas present. It can be my Valentine. Yes, yes, Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, what is that book? That's that song. Is it Death Camp for Cuties? Where he says it's our relationship is like a book, bound beautiful, but in a language that you can't read. <laughs> I don't know that That's really cool. Yeah, well, I'll play that for you later. At any rate, um, so now tell them where we met. Well, it's Texas Irish Festival at the Southwest Public Music Association. They've probably read the story from my point of view, and they've probably heard the story from my point of view. But maybe, maybe they should hear the story from your point of view because it does lead you straight to the door of Seton Place. Yeah, it really kind of does. Okay. So on, I think, March 4th, 2017, uh, yeah. the Saturday of the NTIF weekend, it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm at the country club near my parents' house with my best friend having lunch and talking. I'm recently retransplanted back from a disastrous year in Florida, I don't ask, but I don't know. my friend and I are talking, and she's like, you're healing really well, things are going really good, but there's something missing. You need to feed your soul. And I was like, you know what I really want? I want people to say that. It's the first weekend of March. Do you know what that means? Do you know what it means? And she's like, yeah, it means NTIF. Hey, why don't you do NTIF? And then, like, there's probably... Well, the way, it's Mexican, so she likes it, but it's less important to her. I imagine it was something like Wiley Coyote as you left and there was just a puff of smoke left in the chair. Really, I mean, we finished our drinks and left and hugged and she wished me good luck and I went off to find people to sing with. Okay. And if you're looking for performers at North Texas Irish Festival, you go to the people who sign up are the performers. Yeah, the producers. A CNA. The South Southwest Music, Southwest Music, Southwest Music yeah. Association. Southwest Music. Celtic music. Celtic music Association. It's um, like he always wants to call North Texas Caledonians pets and drums. North Caledonian pets and drums. We're going to the north of some place. Yeah, but that place is Texas, not Scotland. Yeah, no which is why it's funny. So, okay, so you went to NTI. So I walk up to this booth. I've been there for three or four hours, running around, having a cider or a fire, and looking at stuff. And mm. There's I get this, to the SCMA booth and there's him. There's this giant in a third Ferguson shirt and a Ferguson coat. So he was really repping the clan there because he hadn't gotten involved with the clan last yet. And Ryan is a sect of Ferguson. Yes. And I asked him something generic about the about singing SCMA. The people, yeah. And for some reason, we started talking about the book of Daniel. I got my attention because he asked a question like, why is half of the book of Daniel written in Babylonian? Then I said, if Daniel wrote the book of Daniel, why is it only in third person? Because some of it happened to other people. Anyway, we just started talking about that. Yeah. And then, uh, by the way, because I didn't want to be that weirdo who just stands in front of your group all day. And I found a reason to come back, and I found a reason to come back, and I found a reason to come back, and I found a reason to come back. And, and if you watch some of my shorts and or that one, that one social site that we're not supposed to be on anymore, um, you'll know that um, a lovely, fantastic gentleman by the name of James gave me a nudge and said, uh, she's not coming up for us, buddy. Now, there is some sadness to the story. Because I was sure she didn't want any part of the darkness that was in this soul at that time. And so the next day when she came back, I was not a very good person. No, there was nothing wrong with the behavior except that it was designed to gaslight me into thinking that I had truly imagined these sparks and flames and lightning and no, I was trying to, I was trying to stop it with the flame. Yes. I didn't want you, you know, stuck that, you know? But anyway, so in, in the end... No, my soul just said, stop that. 
that's the guy. And we stay friends and hang out and come around. Around three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And it was wonderful and it led to a lot of adventure. And the least of which is starting a show. Mm -hmm. and I don't know how many episodes we're up to, but it's got to be close to like a hundred and... We've been doing it for 20? two and a half years. We started in June of the crazy. Yeah. So we're, we're close to 120 episodes. Has to be somewhere in range. And we've only missed one, and that's because his mother was at the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. a pretty good reason. <laughs> and it's not one of those things where you really can kind of put on a regrowth or something. No. So, no, 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 it happens. Okay, enough about us, though. Well, any more things that help people want to know? I think they want to know, uh, so the question we ask everybody towards the end of their interview <laughs> is, if you had to have the Sarah, if somebody called me up and said, Andrew, at cecoats.com, I want the Sarah. Okay. What is the Sarah? Well, all I can tell you for sure is that it involves one of our hostess kilts. Oh, okay. Because they are made like a kilt. Like, there's an apron in the front and all the pleats and the buckles and the buckle. It is not a kilted skirt, it is a kilt. Except, it's down to your ankles or the floor or wherever you choose. Okay. It's hostess like. I love those hostess coats. Is it because of the warmth or the heft or? No, it's because it is a absolutely ideal semi-formal option. But you can't really wear it for black tie. It is just not formal enough. I suppose you could if you have like a spidery bustier and a satin jacket or something. Um, we just but... found a thing the other day on a website that we're going to get her and see if it changes her mind on that. Because I feel like with the right blouse tweed waist coats. and a tweed, tweed waist coat, you would be I think rocking. it's so semi-formal. Beautiful. You would, be, you would be rocking the Duchess. Mm. Because we all know that the Duke, also known as the Andrew, is the dress shirt, mm -hmm. the, the vest, and the kilt. And that is specifically so that if you're in, you go somewhere, you're like, oh my gosh, I need to be dressed up. You can put on a tie, and all of a sudden, you're in a tie and a vest. And if you go somewhere and everybody's dressed down, you can roll up the sleeves and... Take off your tie. And... Yeah. So, anyway, it's been a pleasure interviewing you. I can tell you have a passion for people. And I cannot wait for people to see more of these shows. Um, like I said, like and subscribe, please. We would love help getting our word out there and uh, just getting get in touch with you guys. So. And we just wanted to say hi because we were going to make a show. So we made a show. We made a show. So we're going to say goodnight, God bless, and see you later.